All right, I think everybody is in. Um, so, exit all this. Awesome. Uh, well, welcome all you first timers to the sixth and final first timers clinic. Uh, very excited that we still have a very strong uh, participation here. So that's awesome. I'm glad everybody came. So. Obviously the race is in what, 10 days. Um, so for this clinic, basically what we're gonna do is just go through uh, some of the information that Lifetime has put out about the triathlon, um, some of the timing that's come out, um, just talk a little bit about those logistics and then we'll open it up to the floor for any questions. And uh, because I'm sure everyone is sick of hearing me talk, um, we have, three first-timer alumni uh, who are, are here today. So we have Granite, Stacy, and Anne. And so they're gonna be here to um, you know, impart their knowledge um, and wisdom and their experience, and then also answer any questions um, and get a different perspective than just mine on those questions. So um, yeah, so with that, we will kick it off. So I have pulled up and shared with everyone uh, the Chicago Triathlon website. So hopefully by this point, you've taken a look at the website, but if not, it is a great resource for most of your questions. Um, specifically, if you go under info, um, they have a tab for race weekend schedule. Um, and so now that we're approaching the race weekend, every week more and more information is gonna come out as far as timing and such. Um, I did get uh, it's my understanding that tomorrow in your email and also on the website is going to be the race guide. Um, so that's going to be something that um, a ton of information about timing, all of the pieces that we may, you know, all the information we might not know today. Um, they are going to send out wave start times. Um, However, you're not going to get your wave assignment until uh, next week. Though, if you are actually officially in the first timers program, most likely tomorrow, there are gonna just be a, uh, a couple waves that say first timers and your best guess can be that you will be in one of those waves. So though you may not know if you go off at, you know, 7.32 or 7.37, um, you should have a better idea of when your wave is going to start. So I know that's been a big question. Um, so look, make sure you look in your emails tomorrow. Um, you can also check back at the website. Um, so as we approach next uh, Sunday, uh, the 29th, um, a couple of things. Uh, in order to do the race, you have to go to a mandatory athlete athlete. Uh, briefing. And there's a couple different ways to do that. Um, one, you can go to the final Tuesday night swim clinic. That's next Tuesday down at Ohio Street Beach. After the clinic, there will be an athlete brief briefing. So you can go at that time and get it out of the way ahead of time. Or you can go to one that is at the Expo. Um, so the Expo happens at the Hilton downtown um, on, Mich on uh, South Michigan Avenue. Um, it's open Friday from I believe one to seven and then Saturday it is open from 10 to 6 p.m. You go on the website, you will be able to see when all of the athlete briefings are. And basically they happen every 30 minutes. Um, so there's a schedule on here. Uh, so one thing I do wanna point out is that there are a couple of briefings that are specifically for the first timers. And um, so Saturday at 1.30 and 3.30 and then Friday at 4 p.m. Um, after the 1.30 Saturday briefing, at three o'clock, so you'll have time to go to the briefing. Um, and if you happen to bring your bike down that day because you want to rack it that, that evening, um, at three o'clock, we're going to meet outside the Hilton, outside the front door, actually like outside. Um, and at that point, we'll walk over to transition. So if you want to come with us, whether or not you are racking your bike, so you don't have to be racking your bike, but if you just want to see transition, get a lay of the land, 
Um, meet us outside the Hilton at three o'clock on Saturday. Um, if you're at this clinic, you've seen my face. Uh, so I will be out front. Um, so just find me and, uh, and we'll head over as a group and kind of walk through the transition area. Um, and kind of explain the swim, you know, swim in, bike out, run out, all that stuff. Um, so you're going to go through an athlete briefing at one of these times. Uh, at that time, you'll get a wristband. That wristband will allow you to pick up your packet. Um, so your packet's going to have all of your numbers. There's going to be a lot of, there are directions as to where the numbers go. You have a no number on your helmet. You're going to have a number on your bike. Um, you're going to have your typical race bib. So there's going to be a lot of different numbers that you need to put on your bike and such. If you're racking your bike the night before or when you bring it the morning of the race, you need to have all of the numbers um, where they need to go. So they need to be on your bike already um, or they're not going to let you through into the transition area. Um, so that's the expo and packet pickup. Um, also on here, they've released the uh, schedule of the morning. Again, we don't have the wave start times yet, but um, if you go down to the Sunday, August 29th, and you're going to see the big, the long, the schedule. Um, it's all the things we've already talked about, um, about when transition opens. If you, if you still have no idea about transitions, I would recommend going and watching the transition video where we cover it very um, extensively, but um, if you're doing the international, you get to get up bright and early and it opens at 4 a.m. Um, if you're doing the sprint, you can rack your bike at 4 a.m. or you can um, sleep in a little bit and, uh, and get there at 6.30 a.m. So here's the, the schedule to take a look at and figure out you know, what you wanna do. Um, as far as transition. And uh, as I mentioned in the transition clinic, just make sure to give yourself enough time. If transition closes at eight, the idea of getting there at 7.58 is not a good idea. Um, so yeah, giving yourself enough time um, to be comfortable and not feel rushed. Um, just some of the other tabs you might wanna look at, the rules, we always get lots of questions on the rules. Um, there's a great video, but there's also just a list of all of the rules. And as you'll see, they're not as difficult as it sounds. Um, lots of questions about wetsuits. I will say right now, the weather looks pretty perfect. Um, so hopefully we won't have any, you know, last minute testing of the water, um, for what, whether wetsuits will be legal or not. So, um, but all the information is on here. Um, so with that, um, I think what would be best is if we open it up for questions. And if there aren't any questions right uh, at the get-go, um, then perhaps we kick it over to our panelists um, and maybe they can share um, some wisdom as to what they wish they had known. But let's see if there, if if anybody has any questions, you can either put them in the chat or you can just shout it out and we're, we're all here. I have a question. Yeah. So my son is 17. Mm -hmm. So you guys are talking about the Sunday race. He's doing Saturday. Yeah. So he picks up his packet on Friday at the hotel? Yes, he picks it up on Friday. Now, as far as the super sprint, I, um, so I'm pulling this up right now because I do believe that you can also pick it up the morning of for the super sprint. Okay. Um, it's, uh, so yes, yes. So you can pick it up the morning of between 5.30 a.m. And um, looks like the packet pickup closes at 9.30 a.m. And dropping his bike off with that, would you suggest the night before, like you're suggesting the, the Sunday mm -hmm. participant? Yeah, Super Sprint does not have the night before, so he'll just he'll just have to bring his bike the morning of. The good thing is, is Super Sprint is a smaller race of less athletes, so it's not nearly as congested. Um, the only thing to that you'll 
you see when you get there for the super sprint is before the super sprint is the kids race. So there will be kids racing, but they have it set up so you can cross and such. Um, but yes, there's no Friday check-in for the super sprints. So um, we just go there Saturday to pick up our packet and to drop off the, we don't do Friday at all. Exactly, exactly. What time yeah. do you suggest for us to get down there on Saturday then? Yeah, so with the super sprint, the, the one thing I, um, you know, the one thing everybody notices when you do the super sprint is the parking lots. Um, and I don't know, there's two parking lots at Montrose and Wilson, but either one of them, it is a little bit of a walk to go from the parking lot to the transition area. So I would at least give yourself 20 minutes of a walk um, once you park the car. Um, so if, you know, for I think the, uh, the calendar is saying that the transition closes at um, 9.45, a uh, packet pickup closes at 9.30. I mean, I would certainly give myself, you know, uh, some good, you know, I'd rather be early than late. So, you right. know, thinking about getting there at, you know, eight o'clock or something, you know, worst case scenario. You, you watch the kids race and um, right. yeah, so, so that would be probably my suggestion. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, any other questions? Hi, I have a question. Yeah. I think Camille needs to go for you. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, yep. Transition. Uh, I'm just wondering kind of how far it is. I, 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 they're pretty strong. Uh, I mean, not, not that I'm going to be blind or anything, but just like how far is it and how long generally will we be, uh, you know, away from transition waiting for our wave? Yeah, and, and I apologize. The first part I think got cut off a little bit. Um, was your did you can you repeat the first part of the question? Sure, it was just about my uh, that I wear glasses, and so just quite just wondering sort of the logistics of leaving them in trans in in transition and then going down to the swim and how kind of how far and how long. Yeah. Yes, that, that's great. Great, and I don't know if any of our panelists do have any of you worn glasses at the triathlon yeah i i had the same problem as well that was my biggest concern um i've later got lasik to solve the issue long term but um i think at the time i just held my glasses with me um walking to the swim start and i handed my glasses off to a friend uh, oh, okay and i kept a spare set with me on, in transition but yeah, and there's one, and the second year after that, I just left that. My prescription's not that bad, but you can also, you've got that, there's a table right at the, I'm sure they're still having it again, where you have the special needs table where you can, you can drop glasses there. And I've done that before in years. Okay, thank you. Yeah, to, yeah, piggyback off of what Gurneet said, that you, there is a, a special needs table that um, you can put stuff like right when you get out of the swim um, for the, for the, the distance to uh, back to the transition area. Um, and I am blanking right now. I, the first clinic, I knew the exact distance. I, I, I think it's like, um, if I mem remember correctly, like two or 300 meters from, um, so there's, it's a little bit of a, it's a little, you know, you don't get right out of the water and get right to transition. You, you, you have to, there's a little bit of a uh, walkway that um, you do have to go down, but it's also very clearly marked with a red carpet usually. So um, it's helpful, you know, you can see it very clearly. Yeah. Um, any other questions? I, let's check the chat. I have another one. Absolutely. Um, so my son has a mountain bike. Is that okay? For him Absolutely. to use in the race? Uh, it is. hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Oh, totally okay. fine. And you, and he will not be the only one on a mountain bike for sure. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Bikes. <laughs> yes. You, you have every kind of bike there is. So. Okay. I have another question about the, um, super sprint as well. It's, it's my first time doing my own triathlon and my son is 13 doing the super sprint. 
and I, I frankly, I'm on this website. I cannot figure out what time it starts. Like I, I'm seeing here approximate start times of 7 a.m., but you mentioned 9.45, so I'm a little bit confused. Um, so let's see. Um, so I just went to the super sprint schedule. Yeah, so um, if you can see the screen, yeah, if you go to race and super sprint and then to schedule, um, and then it will say events of general event timeline. Um, so the way that the Saturday races work, um, the kids tries go off at 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. So, and then, uh, and then there's a little bit of a break because one, all the kids need to finish and uh, they're shifting out the transition. And so um, it looks like here that according to this, that the, the official start is at 10 a.m. Um, transition closes at 9.45 a.m. for the super sprints, um, but it looks like the actual race will start at 10 a.m. according to the, uh, the schedule here. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, so definitely super sprint is later in the morning for sure and then um, the Sunday races. Um, I actually love, but you know, um, so yeah, and, and this should mirror what you'll receive tomorrow. Um, I, I can't imagine that there's going to be any major changes. So yeah, so right now I'd say it starts at 10 a.m., but making sure you're in and out of transition by the 9.45. Okay, I appreciate it. I haven't seen seen much follow-up yeah. on the super sprint, so I appreciate that detail. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I was wondering um, <clears throat> if I, we have family members or friends that wanted to come watch us, where do we suggest that they go? I don't know how that works. I'm going to kick this one to the panel because I, I think we've all done the event and spectated it. So any suggestions there? Um, just you're, you're, you want to have uh, family members try to find you and things like that? Yeah, exactly. Like mm -hmm. I have I want to go watch obviously it's going to be tough I would assume in the water and on the bike but I, I just wanted to like this is my first time doing it um I've done marathon before so it's been easy to meet up at different locations but for this circumstance I don't know like where would you suggest they go or is there a specific individual spot where they can go I don't know so the, I'd say the best spot for families to watch would be along Monroe Harbor. They will be able to see you swim. I've always been spotted. Um, just tell them the color of your swim cap before you guys all head out to, to the race. So along Monroe Harbor, um, they should be able to kind of walk with you and cheer you on as you're kind of doing the swim portion. And then on the bike, there's nowhere really to watch the bike. So my general suggestion for family is watch me swim and then head over um, basically right behind the swim area Monroe Harbor is where the run portion is as well. So they'll see you coming back out um, on the run portion. As soon as they pass you on the run, tell them to head back over to the finish line. So for okay. me, it's swim near the swim start, um, hang tight while you're on the bike, you know, and then they'll see you come running out of transition um, just behind where the swim start is. Um, so there's at least two or three good viewing areas. But wouldn't worry about the bike portion. So there's plenty of good places, um, like just uh, points of like the that funky sculpture that's right at Queen's Landing. Um, there's when you go around underneath the um, around you know, the Adler Planetarium. If you want to just you know find a place that's that's very conspicuous that your family can find you, that's probably the best. Don't say like the third tree on the left. Like don't do that. <laughs> but, right. Um, okay. Yeah, it's definitely they'll they'll find you for sure. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. And then, and uh, what time? What time would you recommend getting your bike there the morning of? If you do this, I, I'm doing the Sunday, the full. What time would you recommend getting there with your bike? Um, if you don't put it there the night before. That's a great question. So I am again pulling up the, uh, the schedule. So for the international, if you're doing international, you have to be there somewhere between four and 5.45 a.m. Um, you can also be there if you're doing the sprint during that time. 
Do you want to wait for the next one? Uh, if you have a sprint, it reopens at 6.30 and closes at 8 a.m. Um, so I would also kick this to what time, um, Stacy and Ingrid, what time would you guys recommend uh, getting to transition? Um, I personally, over the four or five years I've done Chicago, I've always just done it on the Saturday. So it's one less thing I need to worry about. Um, in the morning. So I don't know if Stacey, I don't know if you've ever did the Sunday. I've, I've always, yeah, sorry. I've always yeah. racked on Saturday as well. And I think the general, I think most people, a lot of people are, are worried about the value of your bike, leaving it overnight. I can promise you there's about another thousand other bikes that are more expensive than yours, right? So that's just a general rule of thumb. The bike next to you is probably going to be more valuable than yours. So regardless of whatever gadgets and brand you have. So I won't worry about the security aspect of, of things at all. And then just to repeat- Security that night too, throughout the night, all night. Perfect. So then just to repeat that, you said on Saturday at three o'clock, you're actually, there's going to be someone that could help us do that or like show yeah. us how to do that? Yeah. yeah. So we'll walk from the Hilton over to uh, the uh, transition area. Um, and, and then you can rack your bike, you can pick your spots. That's the other benefit of it. I will be honest. I ride my bike on Sunday morning. So I've actually never racked my bike on Saturday, but I've always seen, and thought, oh, that's really smart. Um, cause you do get to pick your spot versus, you know, before everybody gets there and is in the rush on Sunday morning. Um, yeah, sounds good. Yeah. When you guys rack your bikes, whether it's you know whatever time you do it, it's a really good time once again to find uh, some type of of vantage point. So when you're on Sunday, when you're running toward your bike and you're like, oh my god, there's so many bikes, I don't know where where did I put my bike, kind of thing. Turn around, make sure you turn turn around and. Find something that is stable and permanent, whether it's a tree, well, don't make it a ship or, a, a, you know, because it'll be out in the harbor or whatever, but find something that is permanent that you can find when you're running, you're thinking, oh my God, I got through this swim, I'm killing it, you know, or whatever. So find something that is stationary so you can find your bike and, and because everything, transition times are killer. And, uh, and to kind of go off of that, I saw one of the questions is elaborating a little bit on where you rack your bike. So yes, on Saturday or the morning of, um, you're going to rack your bike uh, where transition would be. You know, where you put your bike on Saturday um, is where it's going to be when you're in the swim and the run uh, on Sunday. And um, unlike some other races where, you know, it's just some odd other city races where transition is split apart into two. Chicago, there's only one transition. So you come back to the same place after the swim, you know, after the swim and after the bike, it's the exact same place. There's no, so there's not two transitions, there's just one. Um, and you just come in and out of different parts of it. Um, uh, so hopefully that answers that question. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Or a few questions. Um, so on three, you said we were meeting outside of the Hilton. Was there enough time to get back for the 3.30 athlete briefing or should we go to the 1.30 or a diff just in general, a different one? Yeah, you're probably not going to get back. Um, I, I was trying to figure out which one to do and I was a little afraid we wouldn't have enough time with the last first timers clinic. So um, yes, yeah, so you wouldn't um, you wouldn't have time to get back uh, for that because it, it is a little bit of a walk. Uh, it's our all the way to the lake. So my guess is to get over there and back and do whatever is going to take an hour. Um, yeah, so we wouldn't be back until probably like four o'clock or so. So I'd either okay. recommend yes, the one thirty or one of the others. And, and the real difference, I mean, is that I would say the first timers clinic. It just, it answers a lot more questions. I mean, it assumes that you've never done the triathlon, um, you know, and, and so they just, they answer a lot more questions, but the other ones will also give you the information that you need. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then 
the day of the race. So we obviously have a, a few things in transition, but things like phone, car keys, um, you know, like duffel bags, we're carrying our sports stuff in. Is there a bag drop for that for athletes um, during the race? And I don't know if any, uh, our panel has any suggestions on keys and phones and things if they've ever used the uh, bag drop situation. I, I left all of mine in my transition bag and didn't really worry about them. I, um, I actually don't think I took my keys. I think I left them with my husband. I took my phone and, and left it in my transition bag. Okay. And are we given transition bags? I know some races do that, or are we just supposed to use one of our own bags? And that's what I was wondering. Jeremy, are you here? I think I saw he was. Yep. Yep. Um, and I, I just want to make sure I get this right. Um, are like personal bags allowed or are they given clear bags in transition? It's a... Uh, uh... a good question i i know that ops are working on that i'm on the marketing side um so i don't know that exact answer i would assume that most of that information would be in the athlete guide that's being released tomorrow um but i would also reach out to the athlete services department through the main email to ask about that but i don't know like exactly like what uh bags are allowed and stuff like that yeah. Okay, that's right. Yeah, and so I know things have changed in different races over the time. So I'll get an answer to that. So there's two scenarios that are either going to happen. One, you can bring your own bag into transition and leave your own bag under your bike or next to your bike. Or two, they're going to give you a bag, uh, you know, Chicago triathlon specific plastic bag, you know, like one of those drawstring kind of uh, bags. And that's what your stuff's going to have to go in and you leave that underneath your bike. So those are the two scenarios. I'll also reach out and see if I can get an answer. And um, and again, I'll, I'll post that on Facebook when I get the answer, but hopefully it will also be addressed in the um, the athlete guide tomorrow or, or when that comes out. Um, so sorry, I don't have the exact answer to that, but those are the two scenarios. So either way, you'll be able to have a bag, just whether it's your own or the issued one with your number on it or that you'll put a sticker with your number on it uh, from Chicago. Okay. And Hello we leave question. that transition bag there with our bike that they the night before. Is that correct? Not the night before. So the night before you can only leave your bike. So you'll still have to go to transition the morning of. You just won't have to cart your bike down there at, you know, very early in the morning and you want to worry about that so your bike will be there but you still have to bring all of your other stuff the morning of um yeah so and you is, still have to get a transition is there a time on this schedule where we can when we go back into transition to get our stuff yes um so that's going to be dependent on um so if you're doing the sprint, you shouldn't really, that, that should be fine. You shouldn't have to worry about that. You're not going to be delayed. But the people that oftentimes have to wait are as if you're in a very early wave of the international distance um, because they need to let every, you know, they can't bike send people crossing uh, at the same time. So there will be a time that, um, that it, that it's, uh, so yeah, here we go. So, uh, actually, no, that's not it. Um, oh, good. Great. No, I think it's about around about 12 o'clock. Once the last athlete kind of clears the, gets onto the run and clears transition. And you normally do hear, once you're waiting around, there's normally a PA system announcement saying transition's open for you to re enter and grab your stuff. Okay. Just make sure you've kept your wristbands on. I've seen a few people before at the end of the race, they've just taken everything off and then they can't go back in to go get that, their bike. So keep the wristbands on because that is a security measure to get your bike and they will check it as you leave with the bike. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, Galian, I have a question regarding uh, the penalty, like mm -hmm. penalty. Um, I know we've gone through the rules in prior clinics, and I know there's like also a page, yep, um, that states the rules. The mm -hmm. only thing I'm confused about is like, how would we know mid race if we got a penalty? Yes, um, be really worried about as a first timer. Um, is and here's I, this is a telling. I, let's see, has have any Stacy and have any of you guys gotten penalties? No. no. And I, I believe they're very lenient towards first timers. Like there's a little bit of, you know, relax, but I wouldn't worry. Because <laughs> they're all like finding stuff and running towards stuff. I don't think there's much penalty opportunity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and that's just, I mean, it, it's a, so um, there will be people, you know, they're on the bike course and such, you know, on a moped or whatever, um, you know, who are the, uh referees i guess race officials i guess that's what that's called in triathlon um and like you can see you know they can hand you a penalty card um they'll write your number down you then you know with that penalty card there'll be a penalty tent um outside of right outside uh, of transition you would need to go hand that card to the person stand in the tent for three minutes and then off you go. And then they would check off that this person, you know, fulfilled their penalty. Um, I think the idea, you know, biking is is really, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think, I, I absolutely don't know anybody that's gotten a penalty on the swim and the run. Um, I mean, I think that would, I don't even know what that would look like. Um, but as far as biking is really the one that, you know, penalties are given. I, again, and I think I said this in the biking and, and it's really, you're just thinking about, um, and we train kids to do the triathlon. And what I always kind of tell them is, you know, safety first. You know, if you're being safe, uh, it's going to be really hard for you to get a penalty. And um, and as far as like drafting and stuff like that, you know, it, honestly, like if I feel uncomfortable being so close to somebody, I need to back off. You know, just like trusting your gut. Like, ooh, if that guy or woman slammed on their brakes would I be able to get around them? If the answer is no, uh, then probably back up a little bit. But I wouldn't worry about it. it it's not, you know, um, I'm trying to think of a sport that's very, you know, critical on penalties. Um, but it, it's not It's not something that happens very yeah, often. Kind of like the professional or national level, yeah. isn't it? That's what they're looking for penalties. Yeah. That kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Hey, question for you, Gillian. Um, is there, are we required as a first timer to attend the first timer uh, info sessions on Friday and Saturday, or can we attend any info session? No, you can try, you, do, you can go to any of them. And that's kind of the thing, you know, the first timers will just be the info session on steroids, um, you know, okay. of like, and I think have probably a bit more opportunity for uh, a forum of questions and things like that. Um, and I think the like pump you up, you know, that you're doing your first triathlon and kind of is, you know, probably a lot more, but um, versus the other ones. But no, you can go to anyone. You don't need to go to the first timers. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Gillian? Yeah. There's a question in the chat about phones and whether they can have them on the bike if they're not using them. And I, I know when I did it, I didn't even attempt taking my phone with me, but I thought that was a better question for you. That is a, uh, yeah, that's a good question. And um, I, um, I know that, you know, the, the rule is no communication devices, um, you know, like you know, Apple watch. Okay. Like somebody texts you, it goes off or what, just don't respond to them. Um, I, I would, you know, that's, that's a good question. I, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull up the official rule book. My gut says like, just don't. Um, no, no headphones either. Yeah, no headphones for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And the thing is, is, I mean, you may see people out there doing it. You know, these are the, these are the rules. Um, so I, I would say, you know, probably leave your phone, you know, in the, uh, in the bag. Um, 
but again, that might be a really good question. You know, at, at the at the at the um, course stops, there's always going to be somebody there, one of the race directors there, who can answer those kind of like questions. You know, but I think the rule is no communication devices, and uh, and so I, I'd probably say no to a phone. Um, Hi, Gillian. I had a question about the bike. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not a local and I'm having my bike shipped there, which has to happen with the pedals off. I don't mm -hmm. have the tool to reconnect them. Will that be an option there at the expo? Yeah. Um, so that's a good question. And I trying to think, you know, I, I know like the morning of and such, you know, that there are, there is a mechanical tent. Um, I, I hate to tell you to wait till the morning of, I'm, I was just trying to think in my mind what, um, what bike shop might be close to the Hilton. Um, because presumably you just need the wrench to like tighten it down. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's yeah. a good idea. I can look for a place nearby and then drop it off in transition to be safe. Yes, yes. So if you went into a, a, I mean, as an old bike shop owner, I mean, that, that takes half of a second um, mm -hmm. to do. So I, I hope somebody would be, yes, could do it very quickly. Um, yeah, that would be my suggestion. I, I, you know, there might be some, you know, there are going to be stores and stuff there, but like to rely on them having it um, would, I, I would, yeah, that would be a little bit, I just want you to have a second option. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, one of the questions and that's one of the tips I was going to give is about running in your wetsuits back to transition and i've seen all kinds of crazy things um my personal um preference is when you're getting out of the swim you do see people sitting on the floor immediately and trying to take their wetsuit off and i generally just don't think that's the best idea because it can get a little bit chaotic coming out of the swim i would suggest and you've probably seen it in some of the videos um when you're getting out of the swim it's just to unzip the top at least get the wetsuit down to your waistline just get your arms out as you're slowly walking um, or jogging back to transition. And then when you get to transition, sit on the floor and take your weight suit off. I've seen people trying to do it while they're standing one legged, they fall over, the bike falls over and it becomes chaos again. So I would get the wetsuit off down to your waistline, then walked into transition, run into transition and then get on the floor and then take it off your legs and off your feet. And don't forget to say, as you're coming out of water, you're like, you have got to say to yourself, I did it, I did it, I did it. And there's also, there's a carpeted walk. So you, you're not going to be like, you know, on your bare feet, like, you know, you know, kind of maneuver around glass or rocks or whatever. It's, it's a pretty st steady, solid place. So take a moment with each one of those transitions that you're like, I'm killing it. <laughs> I have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so in terms of what you're wearing underneath your wetsuit and for the entire race, I assume that a triathlon suit is just what is best recommended. Is that pretty much the way to go? Or And that is a great, I, I think we will probably have four different answers on this. So I don't, who wants sure. to share what they, uh, what they wear? I, I have a triathlon suit, so I always wore my triathlon suit. Um, it, it's not, I wouldn't say it's 100% necessary. You could wear just bike shorts. The challenge there is the padding's a little bit more than a tri suit. So um, it, it's going to be a little wetter than, than a tri suit, and maybe not dry as quickly. Um, yeah. And it's also important that the difference is tri suits, which is kind of the one piece, and then there's tri shorts. So um, I do try shorts and a top. Yeah, I misspoke. I'm, I'd wear shorts and a top mm -hmm. too, not a, not a one piece. Yeah, unless your bike seat's really padded, then you can just get away with regular shorts, but. Yeah. I think I kept, I think I kept my, my swimsuit on and I just threw my sports bra on top of it at transition. Um, and just just kept on rolling and just threw some shorts on and just like went, went for it. 
Yeah, the main thing is practice what you're wearing before race day. Don't put anything on brand new on race day. And my, yeah, and, and I think I said this in one of the earlier clinics too. You know, I, um, again, as having a history in retail, I, my recommendation was always try shorts are like the number one. Like, you know, if you're going to buy a piece of clothing, buy try shorts, you know, because you can do a lot of different things with the tops and whatever. You know, I mean, there's there are benefits to try clothes, you know, try tops, they dry quickly. Uh, you know, in races where you can't wear a wet suit, you can wear it in the swim and it's not going to be like, you know, a like sheet behind you, you know, dragging you down. And so, so there are benefits, but, um, you know, tri shorts are like my favorite thing for triathlons because they do everything. You, you don't have to, you know, and so, so that would be, um, there's a reason for them. Yeah. But are we able to throw fun. on a, a dry, like, you know, say just a bike top after the, yeah. the swim? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Try to do things that you know that are that you've already used or that you already know. Nothing new on race day. Nothing. <laughs> That's that goes with the yeah. nutrition, that goes with your sportswear, that goes with your, you know, all kinds of stuff. Everything that you guys have worked and uh, practiced for this whole season, just keep it, keep it moving in the same way. Race day is the worst day to find out there's a little tag in the back of your shirt that is rubbing you wrong. Yes. So I guess just to to tail end off of that, um, if I have like if I've been training in like a wetsuit in the water, you're saying you can wear a wetsuit right as of now, and then you'll have like a like a tri suit or a singlet almost. It looks like like a wrestler singlet underneath it. You can just take off the wetsuit and then just. Uh, you just go from there, right? You'll have it underneath and it's how you recommend. Exactly. Yep, exactly. Yeah, y- yep. You got it exactly right. Yeah, you have the wetsuit, but underneath it, you want to be wearing, you know, portions right. of what you're going to be wearing. You know, you can got always it. put on a different shirt or whatever, but as far as like the shorts or whatever, um, yeah, you want to be wearing that under the, the, the wetsuit. Got it, okay. Hey, a uh, question about <clears throat> the hydration stations um during the run are we gonna have uh, hydration stations throughout the, the miles so um and i know that that, that kind of uh, piggybacks off of a question that was in here about uh covid and covid protocols um i i think the plan is yes um and traditionally i believe it's every mile there's an aid station on the run only there's no aid stations on the bike or the swim, that'd be cool. Um, But yeah, so for the run every mile, I I think that is open to change based on what's, you know, if they feel for whatever reason, it's not, it's not working with what's going on with COVID. But as far as I know, at this point, there will be a, you know, water stations every mile on the run. Again, I think this is definitely something that they are going to address. in the race briefings and if there's any major change to this they will definitely let you know because the worst thing would be thousands of people dehydrated so um yeah but that's where it stands at this point Jillian, i have a question um yeah i was looking at the um the actual you know lakeshore part of the swim the other day and i noticed that there's some um you know, on the shoreline, there are some, um, I, I guess, you know, sort of man-made, you know, um, iron pieces. It, 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 you can actually, if you get tired, you could, you could go to the side and uh, take a rest. I was wondering if that's allowed um, at all to go to the side and just, you know, catch your breath for a few seconds and then swim again. I can answer yes. that. Yes, please go for it. So my first year, I stopped. I, I don't know how how often I stopped. Um, so you're swimming north. I stopped on my left to the the wall there. Um, you have to be careful because there are like some mollusks there that can cut you up. So be careful if you hang on to the wall. You you can stop. You can stop as long as you want. You just can't make forward movement. So you can't use the wall to propel yourself forward. Um, but you can stop and rest. Um, 
I will, this sort of goes back to Miguel's question earlier about family watching you. Your family can watch you all the way on the swim. Essentially, they can sort of walk with you as you swim. Um, I can tell you, tell them not to be right where you are, either be a little bit ahead of you or a little bit behind you. Because when I did stop, I would look up, my family was right there and I never really rested because I thought, oh, I got to go. My family's watching. So um, if your family's walking along, have them walk a little bit behind you. Also, if you don't, if you're not on that side, um, there was another year I did it where I was not very well prepared. Um, and particularly with my swim, on the opposite side of the wall where the open water is, there's kayaks and canoes. I basically, I managed the swim by swimming from boat to boat. I stopped at each boat, I stopped, I caught my breath, I calmed myself down um, and then took off and swam to the next boat. So you can stop as often as you want. Um, you just can't move yourself forward by holding on to anything. You can also keep up your throat too. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're doing you know your front crawl and you're like, oh my god, I'm, I can't get my breath, I can't get my breath. You can always switch up to breaststroke or you know float on your back and kick and stuff like that until you're better, uh, till your heart rate kind of comes down a little bit. And then keep going, just keep going. So following up on the swim questions, um, I guess um, two questions. Is the water too deep to stand in? Also, so you're gonna be treading water no matter what. And are people so congested that like, if you stop, you're gonna get stampeded? Now, I would, um, the water is, is too deep. There's no way you're gonna to touch anything. Um, and one good idea to think about is just think where it, you know, it's, it does spread out. And the first time it's wave, it is, everyone's courteous. Um, but I do think it's a good idea to think through now. Um, if you're doing any practice swims, like where am I going to be at the swim start, right? Do you want, are you going to make a decision before race day, right? So for me, if I think about like a rectangle is where the, everyone kind of funneled in, I always know my brain, I'm going to go top right. So once we get in the water, I go straight to that area and then I'm good and I'm settled. Um, and there's not, there's some kind of waiting in the water, but it's not a lot. And plus you have a wetsuit on, that does help. But that's the point where you want to be relaxed and not flailing your legs and your arms around. You want to keep your energy reserved. But just thinking, if you're not very confident swimmer, yeah, you can just, you know, what, I'm going to hang at the back. Right? But yeah. So <laughs> if somebody touches you or swims over you or stuff like that it's just you know you're, it's your race it's not theirs so you do what the best that you can at the time that you have it and and that mostly happens just at the beginning so you can like like Ganit said I'm a more nervous swimmer so I always hang towards the back so that the ones that are in it to win it and you know, are going to take off at the sound of the gun and not care who's next to them or in front of them. I avoid them. I just hang towards the back and go at my own pace. And remember that you guys have had some experience with open water and there's a fair amount of people that have been swimming in a pool or maybe they've swimming in kind of like a reservoir or something like that. They haven't experienced the kind of of water, you know, flow or current that you're you're used to. So be thankful for that. And remember that you are experienced in that. And there's a lot of people that think they can do it and then they just it. So it'll be fine. I, I have a question about the swim. Actually two questions. I've been training in Ohio Street and like this is a sound silly, but the water it's almost sort of clear at the top because it's sort of shallow and the sun is the, is the water in Monroe Harbor like a lot darker or is it kind of the same color as that sort of translucent green at the top? I know that's a silly question, but I'm just oh, trying to get oriented it's around a it. Question, and it's good to be prepared for it. It's, it's, it's slightly darker. Um, and certain years, what I've noticed was well, sometimes you can get the, um, the, the scent and the smell of boat fumes. Um, and just be aware of that. Know that now, okay, I might smell boat fumes, right? Because it, it can make you a little bit nauseous um but knowing that ahead of time it is a little bit darker there because it is kind of closed off and the water is significantly deeper um but you're gonna be having a good time just trying to get out of the water anyway you're not gonna be too concerned about looking you know <laughs> seeing anything in there. right 
right i just the, yeah, the difference between the difference between the harbor and the beach are just the, the you have to have deeper water for that harbor and if you don't want to look down don't look down just look ahead you can look down and there's you know there's gonna be some plants or something like say, that but other than that yeah there's a lot like, there's a lot of vegetation if if the water is yeah. clear enough to see there's a lot of vegetation underneath you which freaked me out the first year but once no, once no, i got used to it it's no big deal that's exactly the information i'm looking for <laughs> fish are not going to be around because all the thrashing they're like no we'll be out past you know the boats so there's not going to be any type of of uh, marine life besides plants i want to tell and you that i was just there and i saw two fish beautiful red fish so it, you know don't don't be shocked if you see some some marine life and, and so what's distracting what, yeah no it's just getting oriented around that piece of it but one more question on the so i don't think i signed up early enough for first time or i'm doing international and um i want to have a plan i'm a strong swimmer but i'm not in it to win it so i do want to have a plan and i've been told maybe kind of stay off to one side is the age group, which I think I'm going to be in because I didn't sign up for first timers, that's going to be a little more chaotic, right, than first timers, I'm assuming. Not necessarily chaotic. I think it's just a little bit more competitive. Um, right. I mean, right. I did first timers and then went on to, in, you know, the regular ways from a few years after that. So it is, you know, the, the people that are in it to win it are going to be on that, they're going to be on that very front of, the, of that wave. Um, and if you feel confident that you're one of those people that's in it to win it, then, you know, go for it. Great. Thank you. And you can, you can stay towards the front and, and like Ganit, just stay on a corner, stay to the side and you'll avoid, you'll avoid those people. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I think there were a lot of questions in chat that I lost track up but I think they all got answered um and so but if not if if you asked one in chat that hasn't been answered let us I know feel like my question um is there any equipment that we are like basically required to purchase that we're not given like the swim cap I learned we're going to get a swim cap which is good to know mm -hmm. uh is there any other equipment that we are basically required to have a bike, a bike, okay. a helmet, Fair. Yeah. Fair. yeah, 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 okay. uh, <laughs> goggles, I, like all the stuff that you've been practicing with. Yeah, and I think you know that that's a, yeah. There, there's not much that's actually required. I mean, I, I think technically it's a bike and a helmet. I mean, um, and clothes, but um, but outside of that. Um, there is nothing, you know, like the rate, the race chip, they're going to give you the band that the chip goes on. Um, I know we've talked a lot about, and it will come up again. I, I promise you in the, um, what do you call it? race, race briefing thing, um, is the time is the, uh, transition belt where you put your number on. Um, but they will also give you safety pins. Um, so yeah, so no, outside of, you know, if you said a bike and a helmet, and uh, you, you don't really need anything else. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Gillian, quick question yeah. Um, yeah. about like a tri suit. You know, I know Urban Tri Gear has been um, one that we've talked about a lot throughout all the webinars. Um, mm -hmm. If I wanted to go buy, um, I've got plenty of time tomorrow. So if I wanted to go buy like a tri suit, um, is there a store in Chicago that I can go to so I can stay in the city or is my best bet still going to be going out to Wilmette to Urban Tri Gear? Yeah, you know, and, and unless somebody else has, you know, has the experience with this, I mean, some of the ones that you might want to call are like Mox, what, it's called Mox, M-O-X. Um, I don't know if they still sell it. Um, I have seen Dick's Sporting Goods, strangely, start to sell some Tri stuff. So giving them a call and seeing if they have anything. Um, outside of those, I, I, you know, some of them that used to were the Fleet Feats, but I'm pretty sure they don't anymore. But again, you could give, you know, 
like Old Town used to, they used to have a lot of try stuff, but I'm not sure if they do anymore. Um, yeah, unfortunately, the city really, the majority of the try stores have, are no longer, don't carry try stuff anymore. So I would try those three places, Mox, Dick's, the Fleet Feet, um, but outside there's a, of that. There's also a high and try in uh, downtown Arlington Heights that has a bunch of stuff. And then personally, I got mine on Amazon and I just got some Synergy gear and it fit great. And you know, if you have Prime, it comes the next day. That's yeah. Yes, exactly. Thank yeah, you, I think you, the you. suburbs. Practice uh, with it beforehand. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, and I honestly today was looking for our kids um, and uh, was on like Swim Outlet. Again, and they offered like pretty quick shipping that it would get here in a couple of days. Um, but as far as cities, you know, yeah, I, I think the suburbs has a lot more. Um, but yeah, I don't, I wish I had a recommendation in the city, but I don't. Gillian, there was a question in the chat about yeah. camelbacks for running and biking. They're okay, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, I had a question for the orientation the, at the Hilton. If we're bringing our bikes because we want to rack them after in the transition area, where do we keep our bike during um, the orientation? The, yeah. That there is a, uh, as soon as you walk, when you're going into, there is a section, they'll hold your bikes for you while you're going to the athlete briefings. There's a definite. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, so when you go in, the expo is downstairs, and they'll, again, they'll be very marked. You, you do have to take your bike downstairs, and there's some of the, the conference rooms. They uh, they will store your bike while you're there. Just make sure your numbers are already on it. Um, well, actually, that's not, never mind. Disregard that. That's not true for the storage part. That's the true for the transition part, because you won't have your numbers yet. So, um, yeah. Are the waves, oh, I was just going to ask if the waves are co-ed or if it's just male and just female when you start. It depends on the wave. Um, you know, there are some waves like, I think, you know, I think there's like some of the charity waves and stuff that might be co-ed, the friends and family wave, things like that. Um, first timers and age group are, are split up by, are, are typically divided up by uh, gender. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do we get assigned a wave or like, because if I wanted to race with my wife, would I have had to, did I miss my window for that? Um, unless there's something that you can do about that uh, at the expo, which I honestly don't know, that would be, you know, there's going to be like information desk. Yeah, like something like that, you would have needed to sign up for the friends and family wave. Um, which is a wave that allows you to race with whoever you want or a charity wave or something like that. But if you're just doing, you know, if you're doing either the first timers or the, just the straight age group, um, it will be split up by gender. I see. Is there anywhere I can contact to inquire about that? There is, I mean, it's the, um, I, I know a lot of people have reached out to them. Uh, I'm trying to find it on here. It's the info, the main like email address they have. Um, let's see, I, uh, I was trying to find it. Um, but yeah, I think if you, let's see if we get a contact. Uh, yeah, this Chicago um, ltevents.zendesk.com. That's, I, I would say, Try sending them an email, and then um, if you don't get a response from them, then reaching, you know, then uh, you can ask at the expo. But yeah, okay, they'll be able to help me potentially change our waves if that's possible. If this, it's this possible, actually, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, sounds yeah, good. That's helpful. We'll go to the person who uh, could. will tell you whether it's possible or not. Yeah. Perfect. Anything else? Any other questions before we, I, I think we're going to end it with uh, our three panelists giving their parting uh, advice or encouragement. Any other last minute questions though? And again, you can always post them on Facebook. Oh, 
I don't know if I said this already. Um, this Saturday, 8 a.m., um, if you were going to be down at the beach, Ohio Street Beach, um, I did create an event on the, face, on the, uh, in the Facebook group, but very casually, 8 a.m. to 9.30, um, come down, get a swim in, you know, we'll be there, I'll watch your bag um and ask questions meet other first timers face to face um so eight eight o'clock this saturday eight eight to nine thirty um but any other last minute questions okay well and stacy gurney anybody want to kick us off with um their what you wish you would have heard or known um before uh, you did your first triathlon or first Chicago triathlon? Um, for me, I would say run your race. You know, you don't know anyone else's race. So you'll hear a lot of different ways that people are doing things, but you just got to run your race. Um, and the best way to do that is just being prepared, practice your transition, lay it out on your living room floor, go through it and then read the athlete guide. Basically, every question is answered in the athlete guide. And it is quite shocking to me how a lot of people just don't read it. Because um, if you're prepared, you'll just enjoy your day. Because it is one of the best experiences you're going to have, especially after this last year. So enjoy it. I would say just make sure you have fun. It Race day is one of the best days ever i if i could just have nothing but race days i would be happy i don't like the training all the time but race day i could do that every day um, i would suggest the night before um uh, lay out all your stuff look you know whatever you need to do whatever you need to pin whatever you need to you know put to together take a look at it lay it out and be proud of yourself of how much effort and time and exercise that you've done. You definitely are in a, in a single category of people who have wanted to do this and are gonna make it happen. This, and just what, what Gurney and Stacy said, have fun and enjoy and be proud of all the work that you've done. Irina just asked a question in the chat about, um, is it dark on WAC or should we avoid sunglasses? It's been, I, I did the IT, ITE race probably about five years ago, which is the last time I was on Wacker. I don't remember it being specifically real dark. Um, I wouldn't avoid sunglasses because of it. I would just, you know, you might be prepared to slip them off real quick, but I, I don't remember it being so dark that, that I couldn't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you swim and as you run and as you ride, it's a great city. Yeah. And I think the one thing I didn't say is uh, make sure you um, will be at the finish line. So um, once you cross that finish line, you know, make sure you stop by and uh, so we can celebrate with you. So, um, yeah. So on that note, I think, I think that was a great way to end. And um, we will see everyone either this Saturday or race weekend. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you all so much. It's great. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.